I wanted to make sure we start approximately on time because people have waited long enough. And that is why we are here today, and I'm very proud to recognize two outstanding public servants. And I have to say, I've probably done more bill signings with these two as the co-sponsors than any other two legislators, uh, Senator Brad Hoylman and Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal, who are the sponsors of the bill. If there is a cause to be championed, you want to make sure that it gets in their hands because they have an incredible record of success for fighting for people whose voices have been suppressed for far too long. And I also want to recognize some incredibly courageous survivor advocates, uh, Marissa Hochstetter and Drew Dixon, uh, for all you have done to make sure that the voices of those you represent finally are listened to. So let's give them a round of applause here today. Today is a good day. Today is a righteous day because it is a victory for justice and it is long overdue. So many people have fought for this to finally have their voices heard, including many of those who are with us here today. And I want to thank them for their courage, for their dedication, and carrying on this fight. And I remember back in 2017, I could feel a seismic shift occurring. It was uh, the genesis of the Me Too movement. And people started finally talking about their experiences and holding people in power accountable. And I thank them because those issues need to be raised up, they need to be addressed, and society need to acknowledge what had happened to far too many people. And I thought then, you know, we're finally putting this behind us. People don't have to live in the shadows any longer. They can come forth with their story without fear of retribution or the shame that's sometimes associated with just being an innocent person and thinking you had something to do with an assault. And I also thought in 2017, it was a time when as Lieutenant Governor, I was championing the fact around the state that it was the centennial of women's right to vote in this state. And I talked about the courageous women who had put their voices forward to ensure that women were no longer treated as the property of men, that they would have control over their body and their decisions, and really have control over their destinies. So that was what I was celebrating the same time we were talking about how once and for all people who've endured the unthinkable were finally liberated. And so those brave people speaking the truth five years ago followed in the footstep of those brave women. And so has every single person who's come forward since that time. So today we are surrounded by survivors and truth tellers. And finally, we are starting to right a wrong that has existed for far too long. Because when it came to sexual assault, our laws were protecting the abusers more than not, specifically when it came to something known as the statute of limitations, which sounds harmless, statute of limitations, what could be wrong with that? Except it was a barrier to justice for too long because there's so much trauma that comes with being the survivor of a sexual assault. You, again, you have that shame, did I do something wrong? Did I provoke this? You know, what happened? You know, sometimes there's fear, sometimes there's loss of memory. There's so many reasons why it could take someone years literally decades, to come forward with the truth about what happened to them. And all of those reasons are legitimate. And none of them is an invalidation of their experience, their trauma, and what really occurred. And through the Child Victims Act, we finally saw people liberated and coming forth. And again, we heard their stories here and in newspapers all across our state and our nation and talked about what happened when people were minors. But it forgot a lot of people. What about the people who were adults when they experienced this trauma? We didn't do enough to protect those individuals until today. So I'm so proud, in a matter of minutes, 
that I will sign the Adult Survivors Act with our incredible sponsors, Brad Hoylman, Linda Rosenthal, a cellular member. It creates a one-year look-back window for adult survivors of sexual assault to file a civil lawsuit against their abusers. For this one-year period, lawsuits will not be barred by the statute of limitations or a notice of claim requirement. Also, it will allow for there to be civil actions be revived that were previously dismissed due to being time barred or failure to notice, file a notice of claim. It will not be dismissed any longer on those grounds. So the trauma that comes with experiencing sexual assault does not arbitrarily adhere to a limit of time, nor can justice be held to a period of time. And going forth after today in New York, it will not. And this is personal to me. My mother was an advocate for survivors of domestic violence for decades. You know, literally, I was back in high school, college, when my mother became a champion, and they used to call them victims of wife beatings. And the laws were so stacked against the women in those situations. And I remember my mother, who just had no experience in doing this, but she came to Albany to insist that there be hearings in our hometown of Buffalo to allow these stories to come forth and understand why the laws favored the men when there was a situation. Literally, someone could call 911 and ask for police help when there's been an abuse in the home. The police would come to the door, and if the husband answered the door and said, everything's fine here, the police officer legally could just walk away and say, case closed. That is what happened for so long. So for my mother and our family, this was a deeply personal cause. And she understood how to help survivors and understand the impact of trauma on individual lives. And we worked together to form a home for victims of domestic violence so they could have a place of healing and to recover. So we're going to continue supporting those kind of programs. But also, New York State is the only state in the nation with a cabinet-level agency dedicated to addressing gender-based violence. So I'm proud today to be carrying on my mother's fight. My administration is carrying on the fight, but in so doing, it's carrying on the fight for all of you, a fight that you did not back down from when times got tough and you just felt there were too many doors closing. You never gave up, and it was that resiliency of spirit that we celebrate here today. So those who thought they got away with horrific crimes they committed, I just have one message. Your time is up. Your victims will see you in court, and you will be brought to justice. Thank you. <laughs> I'm proud to introduce great champion, Senator Brad Hoylman. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I heard the, the drumbeat outside, and I leaned over to Assemblywoman Rosenthal and said, our people. Um, uh, but it's, it's always nice to have uh, uh, that kind of representation in, in, in Albany, and that's what we've seen from sexual abuse survivors over the last several years. I'm State Senator Brad Hoylman. Uh, I carried the Child Victims Act with Assemblywoman Rosenthal and helped write the Adult Survivors Act with Assemblymember Rosenthal. Uh, you know, today is a watershed moment for survivors in the state of New York. With Governor Hochul's signature on our Adult Survivors Act, we send a powerful message to sexual abuse survivors. We hear you. And we are going from me too to we are. We are in Albany taking steps to address the scourge of sexual violence and abuse throughout the state of New York. And thank you, Governor, for your leadership in that regard. I don't think it's a coincidence that we have a woman leading the state who's helped this bill come to fruition, so thank you so much. Uh, we wouldn't be here today, though, uh, without the survivors. Uh, it's the courage of their convictions that propelled you to share your deeply personal stories about the sexual abuse that has upended your lives and made today possible. Finally, courthouse doors across the state will be flung open so you can confront your abusers and seek the justice that was too long denied you. To the predators who for decades have benefited from New York's prohibitively short statute of limitations, you know who you are. 
The Adult Survivors Act will bring you to justice and make New York a safer place for all of us. I'm grateful to Governor Hochul, Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins, Speaker Hastie, and many of my colleagues in the State Senate and Assembly, too many of whom are sexual abuse survivors themselves and courageously shared their stories. We also wouldn't have gotten here without Safe Horizon for their heroic effort to push us across the finish line. I'd also like to thank the, the Model Alliance for their partnership and Child USA, uh, Professor Marcy Hamilton, who I called the queen of statutes of limitations. Um, after we passed the Child Victims Act, uh, I said to Marcy, what should we do next? And she said, well, you have to address this issue with adult survivors. She helped us write the bill. That's why we're here today. Um, until 2019, most adult survivors of sex crimes had no more than one to three years to file a civil lawsuit against their abuser. For many survivors, it takes years to come to terms with the abuses committed against them, let alone to summon the courage to come forward to report the abuse, to confront a boss or a trusted uh, coworker or family member in a protracted court fight. By some estimates, as many as 63% of assaults go unreported. There are many reasons an adult survivor may take years to come forward. Shame, trauma, religious beliefs, family dynamics, or an inability to remove themselves from a harmful or unsafe situation. Our pre-2019 statute of limitations were inadequately short to provide many survivors with a shot at justice, and that's why we've changed them going forward. With the Adult Survivors Act, we're giving that shot at justice to the countless adult survivors of sex offenses who were previously denied an opportunity because they didn't come forward at the time. The Adult Survivors Act builds on that important work that we did three years ago for survivors of child sexual abuse when we passed the Child Victims Act. To date, over 11,000 New Yorkers and counting have taken advantage of the opportunity provided by the Child Victims Act revival window. But if you were 18 when you were subject to abuse, the Child Victims Act did not provide you with relief, even if you were in the same situation as a 17-year-old. Studies show that most sexual abuse occurs against victims who are between 14 and 27 years. And let's not forget, most young people aren't even off their parents' health insurance before age 27. This legislation, like the Child Victims Act, is not about guaranteeing outcomes. It's about providing survivors with the chance to seek justice. Today, New York recognizes that no matter who your abuser was, whether they are a family member or a former president, you deserve your day in court. The long road to this moment is one of perseverance and justice. This is advocacy at its finest, and this passage tells all survivors that we believe them. This is one of the proudest moments of my legislative career. It has been an honor to fight side by side with so many of you as survivors, as friends, as colleagues, and New Yorkers. And it's a fight we, all of us, should never forget. Thank you very much. Now we'll hear from Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal, co-sponsor in the Assembly, lead sponsor in the Assembly. Thank you so much. I uh, can't wipe the smile off my face, so I will keep smiling. Um, good morning. I'm Assembly Member Linda B. Rosenthal. I'm the chair of the Committee on Social Services, <clears throat> and I represent the Upper West Side and parts of Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan. First, I would like to thank our courageous governor, Kathy Hochul, for bringing us together this morning to witness the moment that the Adult Survivors Act finally becomes law. Today is a momentous occasion. After years of fighting, justice will finally be within reach of countless survivors of sexual assault. Today, survivors who were shut out and denied justice by New York's short statute of limitations will have a choice, something they were denied when their sexual assault took place. And survivors can have faith that our 
government stands with them in their efforts and our efforts to rebalance the scales of justice. We have learned over the years, fighting first to pass the Child Victims Act and then to pass the Adult Survivors Act, that trauma takes time. Sexual violence is not like other forms of violence. If you get sucker punched by a stranger while waiting in line to buy groceries, no one asks you what you were wearing. If your wallet is stolen, people don't blame you for carrying cash around or having a flashy wallet. You don't blame yourself. The same is not true of sexual violence. Rape and sexual assault cause deep shame. Survivors are routinely blamed and are cast as dirty in the aftermath. Society's first instinct is to disbelieve survivors, despite the tiny number of false allegations made. Abusers threaten survivors, who are often too fearful or intimidated to come forward. The justice system responds slowly, if at all, and we talk incessantly about protecting defendants in sexual violence. There are few who would argue that we need wholesale reform of our laws around sexual violence. Passing the ASA was hard, and I wish it had not been this hard. After we picked the child victim, after we passed the Child Victims Act, I wish the ASA would have sailed through to passage some years ago. The ASA simply recognizes the very unique trauma that survivors of sexual violence experience, and it ensures that they have a path to justice that actually protects them and not their abusers. The survivors who helped lead this coalition should have been spared the heartbreak of reliving the trauma year after year in an effort to convince people that the ASA was needed. After fighting off their attackers and fighting to heal, they should not have had to fight so hard to convince the legislature to believe them. But they did, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. The struggle to push the ASA over the finish line was an epic journey. It's during that, that journey we learned what we are capable of. Tremendous courage in the face of insurmountable odds. We learned we would fight until there is no fight left because we had right on our side. That when we work together, we become an unstoppable force for transformative change. And it was during the journey to pass the ASA that we built lifelong friendships and support networks that will carry us through the dark times that lie ahead. It's often said that the harder the task, the sweeter the victory. And the victory today is very, very sweet. As we stand here today, we face a future in which the rights of women, BIPOC, and LGBTQ plus people are being rolled back. We are lucky to live in a state like New York that is boldly legislating to protect the most vulnerable among us, including survivors of sexual assault. I want to thank Safe Horizon, Michael Pollenberg and Liz Roberts, uh, Jessica Shafroth from Malkin and Ross, Marisa Hochstetter and her two beautiful daughters, Lila and Sylvie, and Drew Dixon, and everyone out, out here who, who made this happen, who fought so hard to make this law come into effect. I also want to thank Brad Hoylman my counterpart in the Senate for partnering with me not once, but twice to create lasting change for survivors of sexual assault. And of course, a thank you to Governor Hochul, who wasted no time signing this bill in recognition that survivors cannot wait any longer. Thank you. You heard from the two sponsors, but I also want to give a, uh, a warm sense of gratitude to our legislative leaders, 
Speaker Carl Heasty and Majority Leader Andre Sir Cousins and their conferences for coming together and for those bodies to make sure that they uh, did the right thing. And that's why I was very proud to sign it quickly. We always have a plenty of supply of pens. I'm always ready to uh, be able to acknowledge the great partnership that we have with our legislative leaders. Uh, also, now we have an opportunity to hear from Marissa Hochstetter, and I want to thank her for, again, courage is sometimes a word that's overused, and we talk about heroes and courageousness, but within the depths of someone's soul, they are able to pull on the strength they need to do something they perhaps never dreamed they would be doing. Uh, you go about life every day, and you never know who's going to be thrust into a circumstance where they feel at some point in their life compelled to rise up and be a different person than they had perhaps thought they would be. But as a result of that courage, we all benefit. So Marissa. Thank you so much. Um, Marissa Hochstetter, I am one of over 230 women who reported abuse by the same doctor. Um, I am a proud member of a broad, diverse, beautiful coalition of people who have fought to uh, support the Adult Survivor Act, and it is a great honor to be here. Um, I want to start by thanking the governor for um, bringing us here, for making this happen, uh, to um, Andrea Stewart Cousins, Carl Hasty, of course, our bill sponsors, Brad Hoyleman and Linda Rosenthal, um, for, for seeing this through. Um, today is a, a big win. It's an important day for survivors. And at a time when women's bodily autonomy, particularly, is under attack, I think it says a lot about the values of New York to be a leader in survivors' rights. Um, the Adult Survivors Act is about giving people options. It is about having a choice about what you do with what happened to you. And whether or not you choose to um, exercise that right is really up to you. It is a personal decision. But what we're doing by signing the law today is putting the power back in the hands of survivors. And that is symbolic. It is incredibly meaningful personally to me um, and I know to, to many people. Um, I was sexually abused while I was pregnant. Um, with my twin daughters, and it is an incredibly full circle moment to have them here today to see this, to understand. Um, thank you. Um, to, to, to witness this, to witness uh, a female governor signing the legislation, to, to be a part of this, and to know that um, it's important to use your voice when you know something has been done wrong to you, that you deserve an opportunity to seek justice. And I'm proud of the coalition, I'm proud of this work, and I'm so honored to, to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. And before we get to the bill sign, we want to also hear the, uh, the story of Drew Dixon, who also used her voice to amplify the voices of so many others, and to today belongs to her as well. So, Drew? Good morning, I'm Drew Dixon. I'm a survivor of rape, sexual harassment, and multiple sexual assaults. And I'd like to thank you so much for having me today. I'd like to thank Assembly Members Linda Rosenthal and Brad Hoyleman for sponsoring this life-changing bill. Thank you, Speaker Hasty, for bringing it to a vote. And thank you, Governor Hochul, for signing it. I especially want to thank the brave and tireless survivors who have split themselves open, telling their stories again and again to advocate for this legislation. Marissa Hochstetter, Evelyn Yang, Donna Hilton, and dear Allison Turcos, thank you for enlisting me to join this fight. And so many more brave survivors who fought to make this day possible. Thank you, I'm so grateful. But we are here today to celebrate the passage of the Adult Survivors Act, which I regard as a parting of the clouds. 
This is a rebalancing of the forces of good and evil. And on this day and in this moment, the good guys win. <laughs> this bill will transform so many lives by empowering survivors to have their stories heard, scrutinized, and at long last, acknowledged. Because when you're raped, a part of you disappears. When you're sexually assaulted or harassed, your entire life becomes a crime scene in which you cower for the rest of your days. The practice of living in a world that doesn't acknowledge your pain is toxic. It's like breathing an odorless, poisonous gas that slowly kills your spirit. When you're compelled to hide your truth to make room for your abuser's lie, you become an accessory after the fact to the crime committed against you. But the ASA will make it possible for every victim to become a witness. By bringing civil suits against their abusers, victims in New York will be able to show up fully in a world that makes space for their trauma and their truth. It took me 22 years before I was ready to speak publicly about what happened to me in the music industry. Because trauma takes time. And the last thing I wanted as a 24-year-old black woman was to call out the king of hip hop as a sexual predator. Before survivors can take on our abusers, we must take the time we need to heal, and in some cases to build whole new careers or even whole new lives where we're safer from the potential retaliation for speaking out. The cruel vilification of Amber Heard that every survivor is watching right now illustrates just how much stamina and resolve it takes to come forward as a victim of abuse. So the passage of the Adult Survivors Act is a big deal. This is a watershed moment. The ASA opens the door to a path forward that reflects the reality of a survivor's journey. And not just the reality for survivors like me, whose abusers happen to be famous enough to merit coverage in the New York Times, but for all of us. The state of New York has parted the clouds. In a world full of darkness, this moment is a ray of light. Because of the conviction and integrity of everyone with me on this stage, so many lives will be lived more fully, and so many people will be set free. Thank you. Now, if you'd like to join me for the bill signing. Take some minutes. I use a pen for all the letters. Luckily, my name's not real long. <laughs> like mine. I've seen you do this before. Yeah. <laughs> Different size. The most thing I admire is your small talk. But as you sign. Yeah, that's like. You know, <laughs> I always talk about how uh, I didn't pay attention to the nuns when they're trying to teach us <laughs> that beautiful handwriting that most mm. children who go to a Catholic school have. I was a little bit rebellious. Anybody surprised mm. there? No, probably not. It served you well. It's a very short law, too, isn't it? Mm, yeah. This is uh, simple and powerful. Okay. The bill is signed. <laughs>